In Bloodborne, once you unlock the Cathedral Ward, you have the possibility to rescue other survivors from all over Yharnam sending them to this safe haven with the Odin Chapel Dweller. Looks a little suspicious, but don't worry, all things considered, he's pretty chill. What's up everyone, this is going to be a complete guide for rescuing all survivors in Bloodborne, explaining how to recruit them and what bonuses you can get from interacting with them. First things first, we need to set our conditions for getting everyone assembled. Firstly, you have to unlock the Cathedral Ward lamp, talk to the Odin Chapel Dweller, who will let you know that this is a safe haven. Very important, you must rescue everyone before defeating Rom, activating the Blood Moon, otherwise they're just going to disappear and you can't recruit them for the rest of your playthrough. You can also unlock Yosefka's clinic, but don't send anyone here or they will meet a bit of a terrible fate. Well, there is an exception to that, but well, more on that later. <laughs> Okay, so the first person you could rescue on your playthrough is going to be the Lonely Old Woman. You can be found in Central Yarnum even before you unlock the chapel. Once you have Odin Chapel unlocked, just run back to this specific door where you're going to notice that there's a dog barking outside at her and it won't even notice you until you start attacking it, basically. When you talk to her, just basically tell her that the Odin Chapel is going to be a safe place and then on the next reload, she's going to show up there. She's going to give you sedatives, but first you have to advance your dialogue by talking with her after defeating Vicar Amelia. I think it takes about three times of chatting and eventually she will be strangely nice to you and all you have to do is choose the dialogue option I have my woes and she'll give you some sedatives in that response. Next up, Ariana can be found by unlocking the middle section of Cathedral Ward either with the Hunter's Chief emblem or just by advancing the game. When you walk up to her window, initially she won't be willing to come at all. However, after beating three bosses in the game, this does include Gascon as well as the Cleric Beast, she will be willing to listen, and will be at the chapel on the next reload. Here, she'll give you the curtsy gesture, and you can get Ariana's blood from her, which heals your HP and boosts stamina recovery, which is honestly pretty neat. Now, right across the window from Ariana, you can recruit the Skeptical Man. And as his name might suggest, he's pretty skeptical of everybody, including the player hunter. You need to make sure you have unlocked Yosefka's clinic before interacting with him, which just requires you to spawn in at the very first lamp and running up and trying to talk to the door. And Ariana must be sent to the chapel. And then he's going to ask the hunter if there's a safe location to go. Now, what you're going to do is actually tell him to go to Yosefka's clinic, because as his name suggests, he's skeptical of your recommendation and is actually going to go to the opposite place of what you tell him where to go. Thus, if you do tell him to go to the chapel, he'll end up in Yosefka's clinic and get turned into a plumbo which is not the best fate possible. Next up, we've got Adela the Nun, who is a little bit out of the way, but also pretty easy to recruit. You gotta defeat the blood-starved beast, which will summon Snatchers in the overworld. All you gotta do, get yourself got by a Snatcher, and suddenly you're gonna find yourself in the Hypogean Jail. Now go to the very bottom, where you can hear her crying out in fear, and as long as you're wearing church attire, you can talk to her. There are a lot of different options for what is church attire, including Gascon set. But just make sure you're head to toe in church wear and you can actually talk to her. All you gotta do is tell her to go to the chapel and she's gonna show up the next time that you're around. From Adela, you can get the church bow gesture. It can also get blood of Adela. The blood vial restores HP and then will continue to restore HP over time. Keep in mind though, you can only have one special blood vial on you at a time, either between Adela, Ariana, or even Yosefka's. The last person you recruit is the suspicious beggar, who will show up in this location that I'm showing you right now, kind of out of the way along the path of the Hidden Woods. Did I say Hidden Woods? I meant Forbidden Woods. I meant Forbidden Woods. Forbidden Woods. You'll find him hanging out around a bunch of bodies, looking like he's eating them, and when talking to him, he's gonna be surprised about you, accusing you of being the one who has killed people, or something along those lines. Now, I'm just going to get into it and say, hey, maybe it's not a good idea to send the guy eating the corpses to the chapel where all the other people are. So, the choice is yours, but he does give you beast blood pellets in return, which can be pretty useful in combat if you are interested. All right, so now that we've got an overview of all the different people that you can rescue, let's talk about some of the little fun shenanigans that our people can get up to as soon as you're done recruiting everybody. With the lonely old woman, well, you can speak to her multiple times to get those sedatives just using the same dialogue options. After the third time, she's gonna disappear outside to look for more and leave you a note saying that she has gone out to go searching for stuff. She will return surprisingly, which is pretty awesome, all things considered, but the next time you do send her out again, she's just gonna be found dead outside the chapel, ending the line for her. Next, let's talk about the suspicious beggar. I mean, I kind of hinted at it before, but he's actually a beast, and if you attack him on the spot, in the Forbidden Woods or at the chapel, he'll transform and start attacking you. However, if you do bring him back, he'll start killing all the other survivors one by one as you advance through the bosses, starting out by killing somebody as soon as he arrives. 
Every time he does kill somebody, he does give you beast blood pellets in exchange, but after he's killed everybody, he's just gonna disappear. If you do engage in the fight and you do beat him, then you can get the beast rune from his body, which is also pretty cool if you do want to explore that character tree of stuff. To make sure everyone stays alive, I like sending him to Yosefka's clinic because it is run by imposter Yosefka, who is just turning everybody who gets sent there into blue dudes. So, if you just go over there, then you can kill him in plumbo form, and you're still gonna get the beast rune, you don't have to do that entire boss fight, and it just kind of makes life easier. Alright, so next we have to talk about the Ariana and Adela interaction. While both of them will give you their blood, one is a little bit more jealous of the other. When both of them are in the chapel, if you accept blood from Ariana three times, then she's gonna suspiciously die in her seat while Adela is now going to be covered in blood. What does he have? Blood? Where? To further confirm that she is in fact the killer after you activate the Blood Moon, Adela can be found outside the chapel and will immediately start attacking you after losing her mind, claiming that you are no longer pure because you accepted Ariana's blood. To further talk about Ariana, if you're able to keep her alive from Adela, as soon as the Blood Moon triggers over and if you're able to beat Mikolash as well, then she's going to give birth to a great one, and this is how you get one of those pesky one-third umbilical cords to fight the Moon Presence, which can be found in the video that's probably coming up on the side over here, I promise. It's probably that. Lastly, let's talk about the skeptical man. Once he's in the chapel, talking to him will actually give you quite a bit of information on all the others. First and foremost, he will actually tell you not to trust any beggars, which, quite frankly, is right on the nose of this one. In another discussion, he will talk about how Ariana might get jealous of Adela and do something terrible, which ironically happens the other way around, but it's still worth noting that he kind of had some intuition that something was going to happen. And that's it! Now you know how to rescue everybody in Bloodborne, and what they can give you, and how they interact with each other. Let me know down in the comments below what you ended up doing with all of your people, and what items you thought were more necessary, because it does kind of depend. Personally, I try to keep them all alive, except I get rid of that pesky beggar as soon as I can, and just get him turned into a plumbo, because I, I kind of think that's funny, and he kind of deserves it. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this fun video guide, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace!